Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and, and life. They are spirit. It means there's no word that you utter that will just go away. When you say something, it is a spirit. It will hang around in the spirit. It will be working for you either negatively or positively, depending on what you said. Now, today I just want us to go through some verses. I want the Bible to speak, and then we are all going to be blessed. Hallelujah. You are the prophet of your life. Say, I'm the prophet of my own life. Hallelujah. Now, Psalm 141, verse 3. Psalm 141, verse number 3. Psalm 141, verse number 3. Send a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. In short, you are asking God to help you guard your mouth. <laughs> guard your mouth. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. And, and, and remember, from the heart flows what? Issues of, of life. And how do they flow from your heart? They flow through, through the mouth. And how do they go into your heart? They go through your ears and your eyes. The things that you see, the things that you hear, the words that are said, you put them in your heart. And for them to get out, you have to say something. Many people are what they are because of the words that were said by them or by senior people over their lives. That's why last week I said, when, when you give your children names, give them names that will, will pull them to their destiny. Let us not give our children funny names. Why that name? Or to learn. You know, you know the people that call their kids to learn what happened. It's a girl that at home they kept on saying, Don't come home late. It's just a girl. Next thing she's pregnant and the child is born. She names the child to learn. She's telling the parents, keep quiet. <laughs> now we don't give our kids names like that. Names must must connect them to their to their destiny. Now, now this the writer of this book says now, oh Lord, he said what? Set a guard, oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. What is a guard? What is a guard? It's a security. Matching land. We are matching land. No more. You're so serious. We are kids a joke. We are not so Put a what? A guard. A guard. The one that will check the words that are coming out of my mouth. If I wrong words, let them capture those words so that they don't. They are not released. Look at Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse number 3. Remember you are the prophet of your own life and your descendants. Some things that we say, they will affect our children and their children's children up to the third generation. Proverbs 13 verse 3 says, He who guards his mouth preserves his what? He preserves his life. But he who opens wide his feet shall have destruction. If, if you are chachara, talking, talking, talking all the time, you will have destruction. There are times you must keep quiet. Especially, especially when you feel like releasing that weight. Just to hold yourself. Hallelujah. Because it may affect your children for a long time. And remember, words the only thing that can scatter words is words. That's why when, when evil words are said over your life, you don't have to keep quiet. You have to stop those words by speaking words against those words. Hallelujah. I wonder if you are listening this morning. When evil words are said over your life, don't keep quiet. Refuse those words. 
reject them, refuse them, say, no, that's not for me. It's not my portion. I'm, I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I will not die. I will live and declare the purposes of God. I'm odd. I'm special. I'm peculiar in the eyes of God. And when my name is mentioned, everyone must stop because I'm special. Hallelujah. And, and, and even when you walk, you must walk like you are special. You can't be walking like a, a chicken and a chicken pool. You must chin up and chest out and walk like you know who you are. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? You must walk like you know who you are. You are carrying the glory of God. You are carrying the fire of God. You are carrying the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Revelation 3 says, I'm standing at the door of at the, at the door of your heart. I'm doing what? I'm knocking. If you open, I will come in. Me and my father will come in and dine with you. That's why I'm saying you are carrying the Trinity in you. Amen. Now walk like you know who you are carrying. That's why you must never agree with the person who says to you, you will amount to nothing. You are useless. No. No, you refuse. I'm not useless. I'm powerful, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Word of God. I walk with the great I am. The glory of God is upon me. The fire of God moves in front of me. When I speak, things change because my tongue is powerful. Hallelujah. Now look at verse number three. It says, He who guards his mouth preserves what? His life. You want your, 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 your life to be preserved. Guard your mouth. Check the words that you utter. Check the words that you speak over your children. Check your words that you say about your spouse. Don't go around talking funny stuff about your partner. He will be funny. Hallelujah. Speak life and life will come. Speak death and death will come. Don't go around talking bad about your children. Speak life, life will come. Effect says they are doing bad things. It's a fact. But the truth says they are a blessing from God. Therefore, I'm going to repeat it, repeat it every night when I pray. I will pray for them and I will say these children are a blessing from God. Yes. Even if they come home drunk and put drunk in your bed. I still say these are a blessing from the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. There are times when they are sleeping, you must go to their room and lay hands on them. You pray for them. Father, I thank you for these kids. They are a blessing from you. I know that their lives are about to change. Their lives are about to change. Their lives are about to change. The devil is a liar. Satan, you are not going to kill my children. They are a blessing from the Lord. You say it and say it until it happens. Remember the word of God from the book of James says, Submit yourself unto the Lord, resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now when you resist, it does not mean the devil will keep quiet and wait. He will push back and he pushes hard. Therefore you have to push hard until it flees from you. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you are praying for a situation at home, you see it as if it's getting worse. You must know it's a kick of a dying horse. Mm. Hallelujah. Don't stop praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. God will intervene. If you hear me, can you shout amen? amen. You are looking for a job, you knock this office, you go to that office, you go to that office, you send all your CVs, they are even quiet. Keep doing it and pray and say, God, I say thank you because you are my provider. Yes. You have anointed my right hand to accumulate wealth. Hallelujah. You say it, you wake up in the morning, you act, you do what I call prophetic actions. You can't say I'm looking for a job and you sleep and wake up at 12 and say, no. Wake up in the morning, put on your best clothes that people wear when they are looking for jobs. And go, go somewhere, go to one office and say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm looking for a job. This is my CV. This is my, what, what are other things that they, they send? Qualif these are my qualifications. Keep doing it and you will see what God will do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yes. You have the business. Keep sending your documents for tenders. If you how can avoid that the tenders are government, all the better. Get other best tenders that will, will give you time to sleep. So it's a government that you okay? Because they give you a tender here, 10 million, but you will get uh, less than half of that money. You can't even finish building an RDP because corruption is too much in our government. Mm. Now you say, God, you are going to give me the best business and I'm going to do my business. Hallelujah. Keep selling those houses. If you are doing real estate, keep selling, keep selling. Tell your neighbor, say, keep selling, keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. Keep selling. Hallelujah. And have a deal with God. And have a deal with God. God is a God of covenants. And keep the covenant you make with God. Oscar Mudimu, bless me, I'm going to buy a car, uh, this car I dedicate to you. But Haru Kupa, the Spirit of Conference can take our visitors to the hotel where they are staying. You say, my car. <laughs> you forgot that you made a deal with God. You said, this is the property of God. And, and I tell you, God will test you to check if you are serious with your word. Hallelujah. You say, God, if you give me a job, I will make sure that I pay my tithes, I send my offerings to my church, I help the poor. God will give you the business. He will give you the job. And he will make sure that you see poor people, wherever you are going, people who are poor, 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 everywhere. He's just testing the covenant you have made. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the problem with people is that when they find jobs, they budget even before they earn their money. And the valuable in the first, the first one on top must be what? The first one on top must be tithe. <laughs> they forget that part. And they made a covenant with God. They said, God, give me a job. Give me a business. This is what I will do for you. And God will make sure that he gives you and he will test you. If you hear me, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and you know, time is very easy to do. You start when you have nothing. So that when you have plenty, it becomes easy. Because if you say, ah, this money is small. You think when you have 50 million, you will tie. Forget. You start when you have nothing. About file to randavari. From two rand to some guy, 20 cents. As easy as that. You practice it until it becomes a, a lifestyle. If you hear me, can you shout Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are bitter. Look at what they are saying on social media. They are fighting each other. They are fighting God's principles. They, they are just bitter. Leave them alone. Do what you believe God says must be done. And you will see God will come on your, on your side. Hallelujah. And speak the word of God over your children, over your situations, over, over your life. And make sure that you guard your mouth. You know, if you want to hear that a person is born again or not, or if you want to see what is in the heart of a person, push that person to a corner. Push him, push him very in a tight corner. Ah, you will hear that this one is born again, or this one is full of demons. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because, because once a person's back, if your back is against the wall, you start saying things that are in your heart. And how do we know the things that are in your heart? But the words that you say. Let's go through that book again. Proverbs 13, 3. He who guards his mouth, he who guards his mouth, Preserve his life. What is to preserve? You keep your life. You protect your life so that your life can be there for a long time. 
Hallelujah. Now, guard your mouth. Check the words that you utter. Then you will see. You will live long. But he who opens wide his lips shall have what? Distractions. Those that when they, they taste nice rainbows and cookies and start talking about people, then they are calling distraction. They start talking bad about other people. You are calling distraction upon your life. And unfortunately, it's not only you, but it's also for your, talk to me, it's also for your descendants, those kids that come after you. You are affecting them by what you are saying and by what you are doing. Now, watching every word from your mouth is a full-time job. That's why we need God to help us. Especially when you begin, it's a full-time job. But once you are used to it, it becomes a habit. What is a habit? It's a habit. What's a habit? I can't hear you. It's a lifestyle. It's something that you even do without thinking. Hallelujah. Those that have been driving for a long time, you don't even think about the way you sit, the way you, you, you change your gears. No, 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 you just do it. And you know you have changed. Even if I ask you, did you change gears? You, you, you will be amazed. How can you ask me that question? I change gears when I drive, but you, you don't even think about it. Hallelujah. I know I lock my car. I don't even have to think about it. I, I lock my car. But when there's crime around in the area, they steal cars, it knocks your head that I must keep on checking whether the car is locked. <laughs> now, a habit is something that you will do even without thinking. How, how long does it take to make a habit? It is said that within 21 days, you can change a habit. Did you know that other people, the first thing they wake up, they go to the loo? They don't even think about it. They don't even have to feel anything in my body. Do I really need to go to the toilet? No. They just wake up, go to the toilet. It's a habit. <laughs> if you want to change it, when you wake up in the morning, you say, I'm not going there. After 21 days, you won't need to go there. You just wake up. Go to the bathroom, wash, brush your teeth, and go away. You don't do the, the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to show you that a habit is something that you can inculcate or you can build, you can, you, you can make sure that it's cultivated in your life and it will become part of your body. It will become part of your life. It will become part of the words that you say. Because it's something that you do every day. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who thinks of the road to go to work? We don't think about it. You may even think that your car knows the way to work. You just get out, go to work. You don't think about it. Now, now, create a habit with your words that will make you not even to worry about the words that you say. When, when we grew up in some areas, there are words that we used to say, but when we got born again, we make sure that we guard ourselves that this word I will never say. When I go back to the village, when they say those words, I, 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 I cure I'm shocked. People are still talking like this. They think, they think it's a good way, that it's a bad way, and when now you are short, why? Because it, your lifestyle says, I only speak life, I don't speak death. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now speak life and you will, you will live. Remember, you are a prophet of your own life and your descendants. Whatever thing you say now, it will affect your children that will be born, even when you are no longer here. You will be dead sometime, and then your, your children will be having children, and their children may be affected by the words you utter. Because words are spirit. They don't just disappear. Somebody must stand up and say, these words that were uttered, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. It is then that they will be cut in your, in your bloodline. Hallelujah. 
That's why today there are people that have cases that flow in the bloodline because they are not aware that somebody must stand up and say this case ends here. It will not going to, it's not going to pass. It ends here and it dies. All those that will come from now on, they will not be affected by this case. Why? Because you understand your authority. Remember, if you want to live a, a, a good Christian life, effective Christian life, you must be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay? You must be a person of the anointing. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. It means you have the Holy Spirit fire and the anointing. When you go to Luke chapter 9 verse 1, Jesus speaks to his disciples. He says, I have given you power and authority against demons. Now, if you want to be effective in your Christian work, make sure that you have the Holy Spirit and fire and anointing, authority and power. Ali good. Holy Spirit and fire, anointing, power and authority. What is power? Or let me say, what is authority? It's not power. Power, let me, let me make an example. I'm the pastor. I say, Pastor Amu, go and start the branch there. Or I start it, I, then I give a say, you pastor that place. I gave you power to pastor there. But if I don't give you authority to do whatever thing you see that is good to be done in that branch, Every time you want to do something, what must you do? You must call me. But if I give you authority, I say, that is your branch. You have the power, you are the pastor, you have the authority, do whatever thing. It's like the kingdom of God. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a man, a, a man who had a field is going away. He appoints someone, he says, occupy until I come. He expects that person to take care of that business until he comes back. Not always to be calling him, hey, what must I do? Hey, what must I do? Hey, there's no rain, what must I do? No. I have given you authority. I have given you power. You are in charge. Now, what is saying here, is saying here, I have given you power and authority. It means we must stay, stand up. It's like it's like when you are a, a, a traffic officer who's the smallest and, 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 and short and, and tiny. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple. Do, do you see this young lady? How can I have a traffic officer? The thing that will give him the head, the authority, he, yeah. uniform. Horse and trailer can come. It drives out to what in what in what in the Russian car. Marai Komba Ar. It will be done by horse and trailer. It will help because she has what? Thank you. She has what? Authority. Now we have authority against demons, against any situation. God has given us the authority. Ours is to exercise that power and that authority. I'm a demoni, I train your whole life. You stand up and say, you pack your load, you leave now. And no after ultimate time, you say when? Now. You say when? Now. No negotiation. That's why when I pray for people, I don't ask them to leave a guy man. No. No. I don't care. How many are you? I don't care. Pack and go. Finish and clap. Hallelujah. You exercise the power and the authority that is given unto you. Now, you, you start by speaking words to that direction of authority. When you pray, don't pray like Munya and Italian. Some people pray like, like, No, 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 no. How to do many, how to do many. You have the power and the authority of God. The Bible says, go before the throne of God. How? How? With, 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 with what? 
boldness, be bold. You are going before your father. Father, I come before your throne with boldness, with thanksgiving, with joy. Because I know that when I call, you hear and you answer my prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, for you to move towards that authority and power, exercise to speak words that bring life. You will see. And the devil hates that part. He does not want us to know who we are. My people are dying because of? Because of? Ignorance. Lack of knowledge kills. I met another person. He was struggling with thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts. He's thinking he has sinned. Then I asked him, Kandi, what is sin? Sin is action, doing what God says don't do, or not doing what God says do. You know what? That is sin. But just thinking of something and you restrain yourself, you don't do it, it's not sin. It means the enemy threw the thought because he wanted you to do that thing so that you can sin against you. Now, this person was busy struggling with this thought. I said, if you are not a sinner, you have not sinned. The day you do what the devil tells you, it is then that you have sinned. Yeah, well, why? Lack of knowledge kills. It's, it's feeling so bad just because he thought of something. No, it's not sin. Sin is doing. Or sin is not doing what you are supposed to do. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, watch over your words. And it becomes a full-time job when you begin. But when you are used to it, it becomes a, a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. That's why you need to guard your mouth until over the lifestyle or habit that will, you won't even have to think and you have to guide your mouth because you are now having a good head. You are speaking life all the time. Hallelujah. I never worry about I can't. I can't. My, my mouth won't open. <laughs> I can't. It's, 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 a, it's, it's my way of living. Hallelujah. My grandfather was a pastor. My father was a pastor, my brother and me. Chanza Uruhana I did. I did. But if you grew up in a house that were just saying things, you have to practice to hold yourself, hold your tongue, guard your mouth, and ask God that God help me to keep my my mouth. If you hear me say amen. amen. And when you guard your mouth, you don't talk problems again. You don't talk facts. You talk the truth. The truth is the word of God. You say what God says. Don't say what you see. Say what you want to see. Mm. Don't say this sickness of mine will kill me. First of all, it's not your sickness. You must understand that the sickness is from the devil. God has already paid for every disease. Therefore, it's not yours. In case he it's not yours. Refuse it. Reject it until in joy. Remember, resisting is not an easy job, brother. You are pushing this side, Satan is pushing on the other side. If you keep on standing, he will flee and run away from you. Seeking a hiding place. But once you accept that this sickness is mine, you will be sick and the Rokho of Elastarach are not long. <laughs> Hallelujah. That sickness, it's not yours. That problem, it's not yours. Reject it, refuse it. I refuse. Facts are, things are not going well at home. But I thank God 
that my God is my refuge, is my fortress, is my provider, is my protector. I know when I call him, he hears me, and he will not only answer my question, my, my, my prayers, he will also show me greater things. Yeah. Hallelujah. You must know who you are, and you must learn to choose good words. Even if there's no money to pay school to pay for your children's school fees, what do you say? You say, God, you are my provider. I thank you that you are the owner of the universe. Silver and gold belongs to you. All the cattle on the thousand hills, they are yours. All the beasts in the in the fields, they are yours. All the riches of the sea are yours. And me and Christ are heirs. And then, therefore, what my father has, I have. Hallelujah. I will lack nothing. And you'll be shocked how, how, how God will give you ideas to handle your situation. Why? Because you choose the right words. You know how even to talk to God. Remember, if you go to God and keep on complaining, you're wasting time. God does not want complainers. A person that complains repeatedly, he complains. God does not want complainers. He wants worshippers. He wants people that are thankful, people that will praise him, even when things are not fine. Then you will see him moving with power in your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. 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 Don't speak facts, speak the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You speak Jesus Christ. You, when you do that, Isaiah 42 says, you will see God moving and marching like a man of all your situation. Hallelujah. Even when things are not fine, you go before God and you say, God, I thank you. There is nothing impossible with you. Your hand is not short to save. Your eyes are able to see. You can even see under the ocean. Your hand is able to reach out and say, I thank you that my God, even in this situation, you are with me. When I go through the fire, you go with me. When I go through the water, you go with me. When I go through the wilderness, you go with me. Then you will see God moving with power in your situation. Hallelujah. And when you arrive on the other side of the desert and you look back, you realize that if God was not with me, I would have died on the way. I have gone through this desert because God is with me. Every step of the way, He is with me. Every step of the way, when I take a step, He is with me. And His way is the light to my feet. Hallelujah. I depend on Him no matter what. When things are not fine, He is still my God. When things are fine, He is still my God. Hallelujah. You choose right ways and you will see the power of God moving over your situation. Hallelujah. James 1.26 says, If anyone among you, James 1.26, If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. What is to brittle? Those that are from villages, they know, those that had horses and donkeys, they know that for us to control the donkey or the horse, we put we put some beads, beads in the mouth. It's, it's a small metal mirror, so and we hook a rope there so that when you are riding that horse, you are able to to turn it to whatever direction or you are even able to cause it to stop. Now God is saying, if you don't wriggle your mouth, you are doing what? Let's go through it again. If anyone am, among you thinks he is religious and does not wriggle his tongue, but deceives his own heart. Remember, if you don't wriggle your tongue, you are deceiving your own heart. Hallelujah. You can insult that man. You can insult that woman. You can speak words over that woman. You are just deceiving your own heart. Because from your heart you must flow what? Issues of, of life. Therefore, the words that you utter, they are spiritual. They hang in the spiritual realm. They are busy working for you. Either good or bad. 
Now, guard your, your mouth. If you don't watch your mouth, it is vain, it is useless. The Lord works with your words, and the enemy works with your words. That's why you must never keep quiet. We are, we are here, and we must speak. Speak life, you will have life. Speak death, you will die. Or you will kill your children. Therefore, speak what? Therefore, speak what? You can pray a great prayer. Prayer in King James Version. And then after a few minutes, you cancel everything by what? By speaking negative words. You say, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, that Jesus hand and the cross for every sickness, every disease. This sickness that is tormenting me was included. I thank you that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I receive it and I call it done. It's a great prayer. When you go out, we say, ma'am, how are you? You say, hey, you have cancelled everything. You prayed a great prayer, but now with your negative words, you are cancelling a, you are cancelling what? Everything. Let's read the last scripture, Isaiah 55 verse 8, and I'm out of here. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me what? Void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now, the word of God will accomplish what is sent to do. Remember, we are created to be like God. That's why there are scriptures that calls us gods. He created us in his own likeness, in his own image. And then he gave, he gave us what he calls will. Now, when God created heaven and earth, what did he use? What did he use? Words. Whatever thing that he created, all the other things that he created, he used what? Words. Only when he created us, he had to bend down and form us. But all other things, he used what? Words. And now that he has made us to be like him, our words are creative. They can create for you negative, or they can create for you death, or they can create for you life. Did I teach you right this morning? Yeah. Come on, let's clap hands for Jesus. Uh, let's read the, the last one. This one, I think this one is the last one. Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Is it a question? Is it a question? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. The words that you say must impart grace to the hearers. Hallelujah. Let's all stand and just thank God for his word this morning. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Let me hear your guitars, guys. Father, we bless you.